Today on the Metal Roofing Channel, we are learning how metal shingles are made. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett from Sheffield Metals, episode two of our Stamps Metal Roofing series. We've got Todd Miller, president of Isaiah Industries with me. Todd, thanks again for joining us. Thank you very much, it's a pleasure. Yeah, I'm really excited to learn how the Stamps Metal Roofing products are made. Uh, if you have any questions, comment down below and we'll look to answer those in a future video. Subscribe here so you don't miss the next episode of the Stamped Metal Roofing series. Now Todd, give me a brief overview of what we're gonna be looking at today. Sure, so right now we're standing very close to the area where our receiving, where metal comes in, and then we process it through various work centers throughout the plant. Now, what you're gonna see here today is a largely stamping operation. So if you were to go into a automotive body stamping operation in Detroit or someplace, it would look a little bit like this. Hopefully as we go through, we're going to see where metal is being processed, where it's going through stamping operations, where we're getting metal shingles out at the end. Uh, most of our machinery is a little bit like a roll former in that it's coil in and finished product yeah. out but what happens in the middle is quite a bit different than a roll former. So we're gonna see some of those things going on today and uh, we'll hear a little bit of noise and that's always good, makes my heart feel good, so. <laughs> yeah, sounds good, well, I'm really excited, let's go check it out. So we're gonna walk through the plant, I'll show you a number of operating centers or, or areas where we do different types of production. And generally speaking, what we do is we keep the raw material and also the packaging, the corrugated and things, at the machine where it will be used. The interesting thing I wanted to mention though, all of our coil before it comes to the plant floor, after we receive it here, before it goes to the plant floor for production, we run a series of quality checks on each and every coil before releasing it for production. And that's really important to us because we don't think of anything in terms of job lots. If someone buys metal shingles, and let's say you do a metal shingle job and it's a 30 square job of a particular color, and you only use 28 squares, you're gonna hang on to that extra two squares to use the next time you sell that color. So we have to make sure that product we sell today color matches with product we sold 10 years ago, and that will, it will color match with product we will sell 10 years into the future. So that's why that quality control perspective that we do on each and every coil is so crucial to what we do before we ever start to produce roofing out of it. So one of the things that you'll see here behind me is some of the coil that's used to run one of our steel shingle lines. It's our Centura shingle line. And we offer many what are called print coats, so that we do products that look like wood or slate based upon the way the metal has been painted. And what you see behind me are coils that uh, will eventually be run on the press behind me, but you'll see several colors in there that may have a wood pattern to them or a slate pattern to them that really helps make the product much more beautiful and much more realistic looking on the roof. I'm standing next to our Centura steel shingle press line. And if you're able to kind of zoom in there, you can see the tooling and you'll see how every part actually goes through a eight individual dies until we get the final product out on the end. So the press operating behind me is our Castlewood press. And this is kind of a unique operation. They're actually feeding in blanks rather than coil. Um, but it's going through a series of forming dies to get the final uh, metal shingles out at the end. And this is a fully interlocking, four-way interlocking metal shingle. So this is our Oxford shingle production line, which is an aluminum shingle. Um, also a four-way interlocking uh, product. Uh, the metal is actually coming into this machine in coil form surprises a lot of people that we form the product after it's already been painted. Um, it goes through a series of six dies until we get the final part out at the end. Uh, the gentleman on the end of the press, of course, is inspecting every part and then packaging it for shipment to our customer. So part of what we see here is part of our metal processing area. Uh, we typically will buy metal in fairly wide. Uh, so we have a couple of slitter lines here where we can slit it down into narrower widths, which a lot of times you need those for your accessory items. 
We also can emboss on this line so we can put a texture on the metal and some of the metal shingle product lines require that texturization as well. Uh, and then further back behind me are a couple of smaller stamping presses where we run some of our accessory items like ridge caps and hip caps uh, for our various product lines. So this is kind of an interesting product line. This is our rustic shingle, which is an aluminum panel uh, designed to look like cedar shake. Um, but this particular product was actually developed in the 1950s by Kaiser Aluminum. It's been in production for over 60 years at this point. And the interesting thing for that is that we think this is probably the most widely um, produced over the most number of years and at the highest volume of any roofing product available today. It's really been relatively unchanged since it was developed by Kaiser Aluminum back in the late 1950s. And we had acquired this product line from Kaiser in 1980. So now we're over on the other side of the plant. We have a, a three press breaks down here where we run some of our accessories, especially any accessories that have to be pitch specific. Um, on this side of the building also, we have a lot of finished goods warehousing. So one of the things that we have found in the residential arena, you usually don't have these long lead times where a product has been specified and you know the project is coming up and you can get the material in and you can run it and be geared up for it. Um, we typically have to ship orders within one to three days after we receive them. That's just the way things tend to flow in the residential arena and it's very important to us as a company to make sure we keep our customers up and running all the time. So one of the things that's pretty commonly offered with a lot of metal shingles is if there's roof areas that may get a lot of traffic. Uh, people walking up there to wash dormer windows, clean a chimney once a year, put up Christmas lights. Um, in those areas that might be walked a lot, we offer foam inserts that can be used behind the panels. It's a high density uh, EPS, expanded polystyrene, um, fills up that airspace underneath the shingle, uh, which then makes that area of the roof a whole lot more walkable. We will also find a lot of times they will use this, uh, these inserts in areas that are prone to uh, extreme hail as well. So here's an example of one of those foam inserts. So one of the things that you know, people often say about metal roofs is I love a metal roof, but I wish I had more color variety. I mean, there's a lot of colors available, but what if I could actually do something that was custom or maybe something that was multicolored? And so we're standing in front of our Thermobond line now, which was a product line that we developed a few years ago um, to allow us to actually give custom color roofs. So if a property owner comes to us and says, hey, I've got a dream for a particular color that would look great on this building or my house or whatever, and it's got to look like this, and maybe they send us a color chip or another material that they'd like us to color match. Um, we can actually color match that and we use a powder PVDF paint. Uh, so here's an example of a product that uh, the base coat was a relatively bright solid color red and then we put this textured multi-hued powder on top of it and this gives it a much more weathered sort of variegated look on the roof. Uh, we can also actually not necessarily put the powder on the entire panel. We can also just hit certain areas of the panel with powder and let some of the base coat show, uh, which gives even more variegated finish and, and variegated look up on the roof. This is the Thermal Bond line where we do that coating and we can do a lot of custom work um, and very unique original things for customers who want something truly special. We hope you learned something on today's episode about how metal shingles are made. Thanks to Todd Miller and Isaiah Industries for letting us tour the facility. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss next week's video on metal shingle roof cost and pricing. Comment down below with questions, and as always, I'm Thad Barnett, and I'll catch you next time.